now that the important stuff is taken care of, uh, we're ready to get into, I guess, the motor part of this project. So, in the most recent video, thumbnail here, uh, we went ahead and we got the rest of our plastics painted up, so that's all good to go for reassembly. So, in the end of the last one, I'd mentioned that now we're going to start taking a look at the motor. So, if you look here, you'll see we actually had the motor running when we first got the bike before we took it apart. And that was just a preliminary thing, you know, gave the, uh, gave the carburetor a quick once over, got spark all figured out with regard to the points not being set properly, set up the valve latch or the tappets or whatever you want to call them, all that stuff. So it ran. And it ran decent. It was all really nice. So at this point, I want to take the motor. We're going to first give it a good cleaning because it is rotten. I'll pop it down here in a second. We'll have a look. And then we're going to go ahead and look into why the starter wasn't working. I'm figuring it might have just been a wiring issue, but we'll hook the battery up directly, see how that goes. And then we'll look at potentially sticking it on a little jig like I used to do with my XL motor back when I was doing that project. And we'll, uh, we'll get it running on the jig and get it tuned so it's running great. Once that's done, we are going to be ready to start putting the bike back together once we order a couple new tires, some new brake pads, a couple cables, and then it's reassembly time. So I'm going to pull the motor down, we're going to have a quick look, and we'll get in and clean it up. So I think the first thing I want to do is I've got this points cover taken off. I just gave it a quick little touch. So this is what it looked like previously. You can see whatever lacquer or finish was on this is after coming off in places and it's marred and it's not looking so great. But if I go ahead and I hit it with the wire wheel on my grinder, the bench grinder, it gives it this nice little shiny brushed finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the grinding wheel. We're going to get this all polished up like that with the grinding wheel. And then we'll put it back on and we'll get down to actually scrubbing this thing down with some soapy water and making it clean. So, to the bench grinder. Now I've got this thing brushed out. You can see it's nice and shiny. It's got a nice brushed finish to it. It's not super consistent, but I think it's good enough. I like it anyways. So we're going to go with that. I could probably come back and polish this up a bit more. Uh, we may look into doing that once we get the motor cleaned up. Either way, I'm going to put this back on here. And then we can start actually getting this thing cleaned up. So let's get into it.
just quickly zoom in here for a moment. This is the state that the motor is in, and this is where we're getting to with a bit of a, that Zep Fast 505 cleaner. So instead of boring you guys with me continuing to uh, douse and scrub this, I'm just going to go away, get it all done, bring you guys back, then we can start having a look at the starter to see if we can get it to kick the motor over. So one thing I like to do whenever I'm working on one of these older Honda motors is I like to quickly talk about these serial numbers that they have stamped into the motors. These are a great way to identify, like I obviously know this is a 1981 Honda C70 Passport because uh, that's what I bought, that's what's on the head tube, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times people get their hands on an old motor and they're not entirely sure what it may be. Uh, so the way you figure it out is there's a serial number stamped on the lower side of these smaller motors. And you see this one has the serial number DA01E- and then some number. So this some number is like what number motor that was built that year. And it's probably only like, you know, 109,992 or something. Or it might be 210. I mean, these things are ubiquitous. Uh, but the DA01E or DA01E is what tells you what year this is. So I'll quickly pop up a little Google search. We'll see me Google searching here now. Here is hopefully some results where you can see where we have a listing that shows this motor is for a 1981 C70 Passport. You can see all the pertinent information as it relates to that motor there. So that's one really good way to figure out exactly what kind of motor you've got when you're dealing with these older Honda motors. Anyways, you can see things are starting to clean up a bit here. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. And I'll probably bring you guys back in an hour or so. See you then. So just quickly now, while I've got things precariously balanced here, uh, I'm into the last bit of cleanup now on the bottom side of the, uh, the motor. So I'm just gonna give all this stuff a good soaking down with the Zep degreaser. Then we'll come back with our plastic brush. That one doesn't really do much. We got our brass bristle brush here. Come in and give us some good scrubbing. And then we'll just continue working through this process to get things all cleaned up. So, precariously balanced once again. I'm gonna drop this on the floor for my care This is really stupid. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna continue doing this. Bring you guys back shortly. So at this point, I feel that I've arrived at a good place regarding how clean this little motor is. So I just spent like the last hour and a half. Uh, decreaser, brake clean, brushes, etc., etc. So I got things pretty much cleaned up. It's not as bad as it was. It looks decent on camera, so that's all that really matters. So now the first thing I want to do with this starter is I actually want to get the solar light. Test of it. So you can see I got some antennas on my battery that are ready for some testing. But I'm going to pop off the back cover and then we can go ahead and test to make sure that our solar motor is going to go clickety clickety when we put 6 volt power to it. So I'm going to pop that off now and we'll have a quick look. see where that starter motor so there's a chain in here which goes down around something in here that gets spun you know when the starter uh, engages but if you spin this around we can see one that I didn't really do a good job cleaning under here so we'll give that a quick wipe but we can also see where this starter gear right here engages these, it's like a universal here, the spin, what well ultimately ends up being a sprocket that's on the chain on the inside of this that then kicks the motor over. 
So one thing I'm noticing right away, and I'm not sure if you'll hear this or not, but that sounds really crunchy. I'm not a big fan of how that sounds. That should spin really freely, in my opinion. Anyways, right, so I'm gonna continue taking this apart and we'll uh, see what we've got. So I just went ahead and pulled this stuff off. I got that all laid aside over here. I'm gonna pop this cap off just to see what kind of shape the uh, brushes and stuff are in. Uh, I mean, this is gonna feel a lot of magnetism, magnetic attraction, but I'm seeing a lot of rust here and I'm kind of, uh, I, uh, mm, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't like the look of that. Ew, so, huh. it appears as if this is completely fucking seized. Oh my, wow, yeah. So it appears as if this starter was used as a submarine at some point because this is completely, completely rusted to hell. Uh, you can see like some of the nice copper connections as they were when they would have came out of the factory, but man, this is in a horrible, horrible state. I'm going to try to pull this out. We're going to see if we can clean this up. I hope I can bring this back. I really don't want to buy another one because for the most part, it's in great shape, but this is, ugh, Jesus, what the f happened here? So with a bit of further inspection here. You can see these little coil springs are what keeps tension on the brushes to keep them pushing against the rotor, the commutator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with the amount of rust that's on the four of these little brush holders, whatever you want to fucking call them, um, those brushes are not going to move. So they're currently tight against that rotor and it's not. Oh man, it's hard. So I'm gonna pull each of these little springs off. I'm gonna try to get the brushes out of the little housings that they're in. Try to get some of this cleaned up and see if we can get this to spin freely. If we can get that to mechanically spin freely, then hopefully when we put some electricity to it, it'll actually spin it as we'd expect. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna do some fast forward. I'm gonna try to see if we can get some of these springs off get those brushes out, get the brush housings cleaned up, and see if we can make this thing work. So now that I've got those four springs off of the end of this starter, we have a quick look here. We see, okay, so two are good. The little lobe here, the little extending part is what pushes against, so those will push this way, against the brushes and keep them pressed in against the commutator on that starter motor. Two of these are completely rusted off, so that little spring end that you'd expect to be here and here are just totally gone. So I believe there's enough spring left on these that I could probably bend them out a bit and make this piece up off of what's sticking off here. I mean, it's only another couple millimeters. I don't think the decrease in spring tension is going to make a giant difference regarding pushing those brushes in. But our question now is, Am I going to be able to clean this up enough so that these brushes actually move again? Because like the four of these are just seized solid. So I'm going to back the camera off. I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to spray that with some stuff. All that good stuff to see if we can get those, uh, get those brushes freed up. Because so I'd really like to be able to fix this. I haven't even looked at what the cost of one of these. I mean, maybe I could buy one of these from China for 20 bucks. I have no idea. 
But before we even look to do that, I like to put in the time to see if we can actually make this one work. Because that would be a win that I think I would enjoy getting to. So, let's see if we can get those brushes freed up. So just as a little test to make sure that this will actually spin the motor over, or it will rotate when power is applied, I've got the starter motor body pinned into my vise. This is all completely just, it's mostly apart. Um, if I apply positive here, I should be able to apply negative to one of these bare windings and the thing should spin. So like, keep this in mind, right now all of these brushes are completely seized solid. These are rusted to hell, just completely seized up. But we should still get rotation. So if I touch this against there, there you go, you can see it spun. So. We know this will work, but <laughs> I have to get these brushes freed up in these housings so that way we can then make up two more springs or fix two springs, get the other two springs back in place to keep tension such that those brushes stay against the commutator in the starter. So. I'm going to soak these with a bit more of this PV blaster. Actually, let me knock that down a bit. I'll get these soaked down with a bit more PV blaster. We'll leave this for an evening in hopes that some of that penetrates. And then we'll come back and see if we can get those brushes freed up. If those brushes won't come out, we're probably going to have to buy another starter. I just looked online and I couldn't find these things anywhere. So, here's hoping. So, I've done about as much fiddling with this as I'm willing to. Um, the starter brush set can come out, but my issue is, even with this plate lifted up out of the way, and trying to push the actual motor part itself so I can get this screw in here out I just cannot get it and it's because these brushes are so seized in this housing so I found a starter brush kit online I hope from dratv.com here it is on the screen maybe now uh, so that's something I'm going to have to go ahead and order it's probably going to be, well, it's like 38 bucks American. Uh, by the time I get that to Canada, shipped and everything's going to be 100 bucks. Uh, but that is the price you pay for vintage Honda restoration parts. So, I'm going to stick this back together just for the time being. Stick it back on top of the motor. And then we're going to take a look at sticking the things on the motor that we need to make it run. So then we can clamp it to the bench, kick it over, and hear it pop for a bit. And that should then be the end of this video. Or maybe not. We'll see how it goes. Let's uh, put this back together. So now it's probably a good time to talk about what actually gets, or what we, what's required to get one of these motors to run. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna wanna think about is fuel, air, mixture, delivery. And that comes from our carburetor. So this is the carburetor that I rebuilt a while back. It's mounted to the intake here with two 10 millimeter bolts. Get me started here. So here's the situation we've got going currently with the electrical. We hooked up our kill switch. 
I then went ahead and hooked up our ignition. I just hooked up the battery just because I want to have that in place as well. In case there's any voltage regulation stuff that's going on here. We'll go through the battery. And then what I did with the coil was I just took a piece of copper wire. I got that bolted to the coil housing. And on the other side, I just bolted it to one of the, uh, the steel bolts up here. And that way, we've got a solid ground from the coil. So now, if I pull you guys just ever so slightly back here, turn my light the other direction so we get a bit of less light condition. <laughs> Great word for it. Now, the key on and the kill switch in the run position. If I hold my spark plug that is connected to the coil to this, say, screw right here, if I zoom you in a bit more, we should see spark on that. This is going to be hard to hold still because I don't have this motor bolted on anything right now. There we go. So, we are at the point where I've got all the electronicals that are required to be hooked up, hooked up. The battery's prob not, probably not needed, but I hooked it up anyways, just to have it hooked up. I'm pretty sure it's not needed at this point. Like I said, I just hooked it up anyway. So I've got kill switch hooked up in the wrong position. This is our ignition hooked up in the on position. So we tested that with the ground wire that we had hooked up on the ground of the coil to one of the bolts in the motor, we had spark. So now I've got everything precariously clamped onto the bench here and also went ahead and got the bowl filled up with some mixed gas. I like to use mixed gas when I'm doing this. I don't know why it's just like something I like to do. So I continue to do so. So now, if I give this a quick shot of some quick start down the old throat here. And give it a few kicks. Hopefully it'll pop. Let's see how this goes. Phone into my pocket so I don't crush it against my bench. Tally ho! Oh, I heard a couple combustion pops there. That was all right. Let's see if. Uh Give her a little bit of choke while I'm doing this. That's popping. Okay, so our idle is a little low. I'm going to make a quick adjustment here. It smells like combusted fuel. I love that smell. Idle, adjusted, leave the choke off, give it a kick. Might need a bit of choke here, hold on. again so like I said now I'm gonna go in the house get the stuff ordered that I need to rebuild the starter and then in the next one we'll be putting the bike back together or starting to anyways so I want to thank you guys for watching 
and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. See you then.